Before the throne of God above, I have a strong, a perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is written on his hands.
Hello and welcome to Church at Home. Thank you for joining us. I realise it's not quite the same as meeting in person, uh, but at least we can still engage in worship and prayer and explore the Bible, the, the scriptures, to learn more about our awesome God. Uh, and that's what we're going to do today. And our theme for today is standing strong in the storm. Uh, and actually, this is as we think about those who are persecuted for being Christians around the world, people who are persecuted for their faith. Now, one of our mission partners is called Open Doors, and that's what they do. They minister to people, brothers and sisters of ours who are persecuted because they are Christians. And so we are going to be learning more about them and uh, discovering how they stand strong and be encouraged, I hopefully inspired to think more of them and re remember them and to learn from them. Anyway, more about that from Trevor and others a bit later on. Uh, to start with, though, we are going to praise the Lord. And we're going to do that by uh, listening to a song, Bless the Lord, O My Soul reminding us that actually God is awesome and good and he deserves our honour and our worship from the depths of our soul. So uh, let's join together as we worship and bless the Lord with our souls.
The reading today is Matthew chapter 5 verses 10 to 16. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning. I really like penguins. I I don't know exactly what sort that one is, but the ones that I admire the most are the emperor penguins. They're extraordinary as they huddle together in seriously sub-zero Antarctic winds, sharing their body heat to stay alive. And it's a lovely picture of standing strong together in the storm. Now, in our reading, we are back just for this one week with those amazingly famous statements of Jesus that we call the Beatitudes. And, And we love them. We love blessed are the the merciful, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the meek. And actually, we don't mind verse 10, which says, um, blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, because that's those, they're over there, um, somewhere else. But when it comes to verse 11, things seem to change, because um, Jesus says, blessed are you. Who? Me? Blessed are you, he says, when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say evil against you. For great is your reward in heaven, because that's how they treated the prophets before you. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute, I don't know that I want the same reward as the prophets that came before me, do I? Somewhere between verse 10 and verse 11, Jesus goes from those who are out there to you and me. So what's going on? Well, in God's great plan, he wants to bring together that which was separated. So God's in the business of bringing together. He offers to bring each of us into relationship with him through Christ. And in doing that, he brings us together as Christ's followers, all over the world, together. And God calls that family. Now, for some, because of past experience, the word family may not always be a positive idea. But God's plan is to restore right family relationships in a new family, the first member of whom is Jesus himself. Hebrews 2 verse 11 says, both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. And Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. Jesus said persecution would come to the family. He said, if they persecuted me, then they will persecute you. 
but he calls us to stand strong in the storm. And one of the ways that we do that is to stand together, stand together as this new family, a bit like Empire Penguins stand together. Now, Open Doors is our mission partner of the month and Open Doors for many years has worked with the persecuted church all over the world. And every year they produce a worldwide watch list of the 50 places in which it is most difficult to be a Christian. And here's a video of the top five toughest places to be a Christian. What would you do if your faith put you in danger? If it meant facing insults and abuse, not getting a job or education, being assaulted, imprisoned, even killed. Hundreds of millions of Christians live in countries where choosing to follow Jesus means danger and persecution. And these are the five countries where their faith costs the most. Number five, Pakistan, where Christians can be falsely accused of blasphemy. They are denied education and work opportunities. Churches are bombed. Christians are jailed on false charges, but Pakistani Christians are determined to meet to worship. Number four, Libya, where there are only some 150 Libyan Christians. Churches for Libyans are forbidden. Christian migrants are targeted, executed by militants or sold into slavery. But Libyans are coming to Christ through TV, radio and web. Number three, Somalia, where Christians can be killed on the spot. All citizens are assumed to be Muslims. Militant groups want to eradicate all Christians. Owning a Bible can mean instant execution. But Christians meet in secret and many Muslims seek Christ. Number two, Afghanistan, where Christians have to hide even after death. Islamic extremism is everywhere. Christians are buried as Muslims because their relatives would be punished. But people still meet Christ in dreams. Number one, North Korea, where leaders are worshiped like gods. There is no freedom. People live under constant surveillance. 50 to 70,000 Christians are imprisoned, but in prisons and safe houses, North Koreans are coming to Christ. Open Doors exists to strengthen and support persecuted Christians wherever they are and for as long as they need it. Through the gifts and prayers of Open Doors supporters, our global underground networks are able to reach millions of Christians with food and medicine, spiritual care, smuggled Bibles and Christian books, training, and legal advice. Homes are rebuilt, lives are rescued, churches restored. For over 60 years, Open Doors has stood with Christians whose faith puts them in danger, who dare to share Jesus no matter the cost. Because as Christians, we are family, one body, one church. And when your family is in danger, there's only really one question to ask. What will you do? So what can we do? Well, I want to suggest two things. Firstly, we can stand with them. We can make a difference to their lives. And secondly, we can be inspired by them. We can let them make a difference to our lives. So how do we stand with them? Well, we need to get to know them, to know who, th who they are. What are they like? Well, perhaps they're like this. They're like Miriam, a refugee displaced from her home in Iraq, now living in a refugee camp where persecution and prejudice continue because she's a Christian. Or a house church Christian in North Korea, who's seen as a traitor because he won't worship the country's leader. Or this Kazakh church leader 
who's serving four years house arrest followed by three years probation for the crime of administering communion to his church members. Or this victim of violence at the hands of militants from Somalia. Or this Muslim background believer rejected by her family because of her faith in Jesus. Or this Hindu background believer in India, disowned by his father, threatened with death by his brothers, but who says, though not a day has gone by without some form of persecution, yet God is blessing me. In many places around the world, COVID has made the situation for persecuted Christians harder still. So in some places like India, for instance, Christians are put to the back of the queue uh, for receiving relief aid. And this is um, a telephone recording of um, an Indian Christian desperately seeking help from the pastor of her church. अच्छा क्या काम करते हैं? मैं यही बिहारी सब्जी उब्जी में जाता तो भी बंद है। अच्छा आपके घर में कितने लोग हैं परिवार में? मैं तो है आठ परिवार। अच्छा अच्छा अच्छा। हाँ बहुत दुखा है। आपके पास अभी राशन है नहीं? नहीं राशन रहता तो मैं पास्टर को फोन ही करता। बहुत दुखा है। चलिए ठीक है बहन हम आपके लिए प्रार्थना करते हैं और मैं कोशिश करता हूँ कि क्या हो सकता कल हम आपके लिए कुछ इंतियाम करेंगे ठीक है? ठीक है। कोई दूसरा लोग राशन लेके नहीं पहुँचे आपके पास? कोई नहीं पहुँचा है राशन लेके कोई नहीं सारे जुगिये इधर दे देता है मेरे माले नहीं आता है। अच्छा। आपके माले की क्यों नहीं आता है? कोई नहीं आता है कोई नहीं मेरे मेरे बेरे के लोग तरस रहा है रोटी बेचकर। ओहो कितना घर होगा आपके उधर? इधर नौ 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 घर आएगा नौ जुगिये। सब विश्वासी है? सब विश्वासी है। So this is our family. And once we know about them, we can pray for them and we can lobby for them. Uh, in Galatians, Paul says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. We can give to Open Doors and other uh, charities and agencies working to support the persecuted church. We can help with their spiritual needs. Uh, how many Bibles do I have uh, compared with some Christian communities that that have only small sections of the Bible? And we can help with their practical needs. We can undertake events and raise sponsorship and at the same time raise the profile of the persecuted church. We can stand up for them. Open Doors regularly runs campaigns with MPs to raise the profile of persecuted Christians. And we can write or email and speak up for our brothers and sisters uh, amongst the politicians. Open Doors helps people to write to Christian prisoners and sometimes to write to governments or ambassadors um, asking for their release. And uh, Open Doors even sends uh, people who want to to go on trips to try and meet and engage and encourage members of our persecuted family. The second thing we can do is be inspired by them. It's easy to feel intimidated and say, well, I could never be that brave, but that's not how they see it. A Bangladeshi Christian uh, from a Buddhist background by the name of Somong said this, I have lost everything, my family, friends, relatives, and all my properties, but I am not sad because I have found a bigger family in Christ. Now, our persecuted family are not stupid or ignorant or simple. They have just realised that, as that intellectual giant C.S. Lewis said, Christianity, if false, is of no importance. But if true, it's of infinite importance. The only thing it cannot be is moderately important. Knowing Jesus is infinitely important. So let their in example inspire us. Let us be willing, as Jesus said in those verses we heard read, to be salt, to 
and to be light, to be visible to those in darkness, to be salty, to be effective in our life for the Lord. And it does take courage to share something of our trust in Jesus, and especially that in our secular culture. But accepting the the odd wry smile or the gentle rebuff or the polite, de- the polite decline to come to Alpha or whatever it might be, well, that's not too big a price to pay compared with our brothers and sisters. And actually, maybe coronavirus is changing our culture. Our society is being humbled by the virus and people are looking for answers. And our faith says that our God is still in control and still has a plan and a purpose for every single person. So let us be inspired by our persecuted family. And like the writer to the Hebrews says, fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and has now sat at the right hand of the throne of God. So my question for this week is, in what way will our persecuted family inspire you? I want to end with a form of prayer uh, and blessing for our persecuted family. Uh, Many of us will remember that incredible, moving song from some months ago, the UK Blessing. Well, Tim Hughes has worked with Open Doors and recreated that song, but with some wonderful images of our persecuted brothers and sisters. So let's use this song now as a, a meditation, a prayer of blessing for them and for us.
his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor Our prayers today are going to focus on two specific areas, the persecuted church worldwide and Christians Against Poverty and Related Issues, as today is Cap Sunday. So let us pray together. Brother Andrew, the founder of Open Doors, who support persecuted Christians, said, our prayers can go where we cannot. And so our prayers are travelling this morning to the Middle and Far East, parts of North Africa and China. Almighty God, we thank you that Open Doors partners have so far delivered aid to 9,000 families impacted by COVID-19. Please protect all those involved in the distribution of aid and guide them to the families most in need. God of grace and truth, you hold our lives in your hand. Hold especially, we pray, your persecuted churches, where faith is costly, hope is low, and love is hard to find. Give to these, your people, strength beyond their imagining and joy that cannot be quenched, that their witness may provoke others to faith and cause your kingdom to go forward in peace and power. This we ask in the loving name of Jesus. Amen. Echoing prayers from a priest in Iraq and praying too for Syria. We pray for grace to come into the lives of all Christians in these two countries. We thank you, Lord, that they do see the Holy Spirit working. And we pray that in their weakness they will be sustained by you and that they will remain faithful. We pray too for the governments of Iraq and Syria and pray that they will become infiltrated by those who love you so that love and not hate will guide the leaders there. 
May your holy angels surround and protect all those suffering for their faith and help them all to stand strong in the storm. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Today is Cap Sunday, and we give thanks, O Lord, for this organisation that is Christians Against Poverty. We pray for the leaders in Bradford as they look to new ways of working and reaching people as they offer a lifeline to those pulled up by the rising waters of debt and poverty. We pray for our own local debt centre covering Nailsey, Clevedon and Portis Head and for Joanna, its manager. Guide her and others involved in providing advice, food bank vouchers and also for the befrienders who walk alongside clients. We pray for all those struggling with debt at this time for those unemployed and those fearing for their jobs. May they find the help and advice they need and may your love touch their lives in a special way. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We remember now any known to us needing our prayers in a short moment of silence. So let us name them before God, those who are unwell, bereaved, or struggling with life in any way. Come, Holy Spirit, in love and strength, and uphold them all. We conclude our prayers by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. As was just mentioned in the prayers, uh, there is help available for anybody who is struggling with the issue of debt at this time. And if you would like to know more about our own local debt centre, then do log on to capuk.org and that will be able to give you more information. Or you could ring Joanna, the debt centre manager, and I've got her number here. It is 07568 354 She would be more than willing to listen and if she can to help. So do pass that information on to anyone who you think might find it helpful. So as we look forward to Church at Home next week, we're going to be starting a new series. And we're going to be looking at those believers in the Bible who were suffering in isolation. We're talking about people who had their plans upended, who ended up in a completely new situation, and they were on their own, without their usual support structures there. And that, I guess, is very much like us at the moment in the whole COVID pandemic. So the idea is to see what we can learn from them. What can we learn from their faith and how they sought to live out their faith in their unique circumstances? So we're going to start with King David next week. Uh, then after that, we've got uh, the Apostle Paul. And then the week after that, the Apostle John. And our hope is that that might be a real help to us understanding more about how they coped and therefore what we can learn to help us not only cope, but really genuinely flourish in faith. So that's Church at Home next week. And of course, we can't meet in large groups to worship together, but it is still possible at the moment to meet in small groups. So 
why not invite somebody to come and watch church at home with you? You could get a friend from church and the two of you, maybe or more, could enjoy worship at home together. And at least that way we're still having some fellowship as we are worshipping together. Now talking of people, I think one of the things we hear a lot is that on the church at home, one of the things people appreciate is seeing pictures of familiar faces. And it's just lovely to be reminded of church family who perhaps we haven't seen for a while. Well, how about you? Why don't you feature on church at home? We'd love you to. And in fact, there's a way that you can. So what we're doing is we're going to put together a short montage of videos, very, very, very brief videos, of people telling us what they enjoy about autumn. Autumn video challenge. Could you just take a video of yourself just giving one sentence about what you enjoy about autumn? And then we'll put all these together and we'll have lots of these really short videos that hopefully can help us together as a church family celebrate autumn. And it'd be so lovely to have lots of people involved. So if you can, get thinking and just send us a five second video telling us what you enjoy about autumn. Autumn video challenge. Well, that's it for Church at Home this week. Look forward to joining with you in future weeks. Uh, but for now, may God bless you as you seek to serve him in this coming week. May God bless you even in the storm that you might be experiencing. It may not be the same as the storm that some of our persecuted brothers and sisters are facing, but maybe it's a different storm that you're in right now. May God be your shield and your strength at this time. So, God bless and goodbye.